We're here at AQS Quilt Week in Paducah and I'm here with Mary Olson who won first place in what category? Large Quilt Movable Machine. Okay, and that's, spon that's sponsored by ABM International. Well, another beautiful quilt that won a first place award. Oh, thank you. I know you did a few things a little bit different on this quilt. Mm -hmm. I like to say I have a love-hate relationship with it. <laughs> it was the one that just kept on giving and giving. So one of the things, uh, originally the design was going to be a circle, and then I talked to some friends, a little just logistically challenging to sh send them out to shows. So then I had to come up with the design to make it a square. And then after made it a square, of course, we then at that point decided we had to have something to ground it. So then came the next border out. And I was doing this is the Ricky Tim's Razzle thread. And so I actually put it in the bobbin when I was creating the quilt top and sewed all the way around and flipped and it was too perfect, Bonnie. I don't do too perfect. <laughs> so I, I actually picked all the stitches out and then proceeded with the quilt. And then when I was all done, no crystals affixed yet, but all done with it, I decided it needed it. So then I took now a very heavy quilt because we've got now the, the front, the backing, and then two layers of batting. You did some terpunto, mm -hmm. and so you have another layer under some sections. Correct. Anywhere there's applique on the quilt or the borders, what I do is when I'm actually, because this is all raw edge buttonhole stitch, and so when I'm doing the quilt top, I'll put a section I'll cut out, a section, square section of batting. In this case, I used top wool batting, mm -hmm. and did the buttonhole stitching all the way around. And so when you're done, I then cut out the extra batting away. And just leave it in these sections. Correct. And so that way it's okay. kind of killing two birds with one stone. I get the trapunto, um, but I do it at the same time, and it breaks up all the stitching and stuff. Like, like I said, it was a labor of love, a love-hate relationship. And so it was nice though, to send it to, to AQS after it was accepted in the show, because I did, sometimes you need to walk away and take a little break. <laughs> and and so, then walk in and see it hanging too. That's a nice yeah, feeling, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. So I have a question. Yeah. Because you have all of this shape, um, and so did you do, the applique, oh, well, obviously you did. What was the shape of the piece you're working on for that? Are you working on a square piece of fabric or is it a big piece of fabric? Oh, this was a big piece. It was, so it was a whole circle? It was actually a square, and the reason it was a square is I used a long arm, so I'd have to oh. put it on the frame. So I hadn't cut it yes. down. However, as it morphed and grew, I had to add some more fabric <laughs> to the bottom and and get it on there and so yeah no it it's interesting um how things just morph yes. over time and so when i started this quilt because i had one big yellow piece Circle? of fabric yes. exactly <laughs> and uh, my designs all i'm a hand designer so it's all drawn out and so i actually start with the center and then put the applique down here and then work my way out okay couple of reasons one it's a large piece of fabric but when you don't have a whole bunch everywhere, you can squish that fabric still under the machine. Right. <laughs> when you're sewing it on the home sewing machine, uh -huh. doing the buttonhole. Because uh -huh. all of these require 360 degree turns to get all the, the blanket stitching done. So. Well, it's another beautiful quilt from Mary Olson. Congratulations again, Mary. And we hope you'll enter your quilts in an AQS quilt contest. And we hope we'll see you at an AQS Quilt Week event soon.